right. All right. Oh, trust this computer? Yes, I think I will. OK. Expo enables developers to build high quality mobile experiences in record time. For example, you could add the new liquid glass effects to your app as soon as they were announced this year at WWDC. And this includes so many delightful effects like link previews and context menus that make your app feel fully optimized for the device that it's running on. And in Expo, we deliver these effects through intuitive, composable, React-first APIs. And then we squeeze every ounce of performance out of them with React Compiler, which I'm proud to announce is now enabled by default in Expo for all new projects. React, yeah. Fantastic work by the React Compiler team. This is huge, especially on low-end Android devices. And when you build a native app, you can integrate deeply with the platform to add rich, multi-target functionality, uh, such as live activities, home screen widgets, and app clips. This is all made incredibly easy in Expo. So to recap, Expo is the fastest way to build high-quality, limitless experiences that target all major platforms. And it keeps getting better. You can try it today with BunX Create Expo. But there's more to building great software than simply using the right framework. I believe that quality is a function of iteration. The more times that you can deliver an experience end to end, the better the results will be. And it begs the question, how many times can you actually iterate end to end in a single day when you're building a mobile app? So let's explore. On web, you can simply run a command like EAS deploy to ship instantly. No provisioning profiles, no permissions, you just ship everywhere. That's the gold standard of deployment. And at Expo, we've set out to bring this to mobile too. Deployment to the Apple App Store is a painfully difficult process, and there's no way around it. You have to build the app, sign it, upload it, wait for it to process, and then submit it for a review. This is a process that used to take weeks. But with Expo, you can simply run MPX test flight from any computer, Windows or Mac, and it will be built, signed, and sent to test flight, ready for you to download. We pioneered the one-line mobile deployment command, but there were still a number of ways we could improve it this year. For example, you still had to go to the Apple website, which is a slow website, and fill out forms before you could download the app. We solved this eight months ago by automating the entire test flight setup end to end. That's pretty sweet. And after we created a pipeline for going from command line to device, we did a deep dive on making it fast. We upgraded EAS build with state-of-the-art Apple computers, we used Bun for installs, we sped up Metro Bundler, and we worked with Meta to pre-compile React Native for iOS. This resulted in about 4x faster builds. Today, you can go for it, yeah. <laughs> Today, you can deploy a base project in about five minutes, or can you? You see, there's a hidden cost to needing a CLI to kick off builds. You have to download a number of things, clone your repo, and set up credentials, all of which add room for slowness and uncertainty. So we reached for Expo and built an Expo website called Launch that makes one-click deployment available instantly from any device. As a result, you can launch an app end-to-end -end from your iPhone to your iPhone in less than 10 minutes. No exploits, just the full official process completely automated which means at long last, you can now compile your Xcode projects from your Tesla or even your Apple Watch. Less than 10 minutes means about 144 deployments a day. That's way more than last year and a step change improvement over standard native development. This means higher quality apps for everyone, everywhere. Drink some water, this next part's gonna be a doozy. So to recap, you can build any sort of app or website using beautiful native primitives, then launch them fast from your command line or browser. And there's no other framework on Earth like this today. It's all made possible by React. This stack enables you to build the most impactful and exciting apps. And there's 
really no better way to show that than with a demonstration. Now, I love a good live demo, especially one involving Wi-Fi and generative content. So over the week, I was able to, th over the last week, I guess now it's been about eight days, I was able to throw together a prototype of a mobile code editor. Think of it like Cursor or VS Code, but as an Expo app for building and launching universal Expo apps. And now I will attempt to demonstrate it live. I bet I can, I'm using Expo. Let's uh, pop in here. File new, new movie. <laughs> Just I'm gonna build it right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see him. Playing with this bad boy here, but uh, yeah, let's just disconnect, reconnect. Cycle back through this. There we, oh, I think we might, we might be close. Yeah. Well, we always have backups, but let's see if we can, let's try this one more time. The demo is the quick time, I think. Let's see if we can, okay, you know what? I got, I, got a, I got another plan here. I'm gonna just try this one more time though, because I prefer the, the physical keyboard over my, my plan, but whatever. We'll, let's go for this, this backup. This is something that the, uh, the European mind probably cannot comprehend, and it is iPhone mirroring to your Mac. But it does mean I have to stand up here and do it from over the, the edge of the screen. So let's give this a try. All right. So inside of this project, we pop open our application. When we click this button, it's going to uh, create the first file in our project. We'll click that, and we've got our first file. And now this is going to be um, tied to the project immediately. So here we can see the code for our editor running inside of an Expo DOM component. So this is the Monaco editor. Let's see how well we can, so you gotta scroll the swipe. Uh, so let's change this around a little bit. Let's say, um, I don't know, hey instead of hello. And we should see, we should see it just like updates automatically, instantly on device. It's super fast because we're, we're just bundling right there on the device. Um, and then I also have a little bit of a co-pilot in here because typing generally pretty slow on a device. Uh, so we can say add a, a tab bar. And here goes nothing. Let's see how the generation does. So it's going to just start pumping away at code. This is connected to an Expo API route. We're also, we have some server actions in there as well. And we can just see it's like, you know, jumping through code, buffering things out immediately. Behind this, we can see that there's some, some errors as it's just live updating. And down here we have, looks like a native search, and then we have a native tab item in here. This is what tab bars look like in iOS 26. <laughs> All right, sweet. This is the basics. Um, let's make something a little bit more complicated, though. Let's, let's clear this out, start with a new project. Um, I really like the, the Pokemon theme song, the Catch Em All for React Native. I've been doing this for like seven years, didn't think of that. Um, so let's try uh, just the classic. Uh, let's see. Build a Pokedex app with search and favorites. Honestly, just having the full keyboard here, like I could, this could just be my normal code setup. All right, so we'll kick that off. Back here we can see, of course, the, the errors as they're piling in from missing resolutions. Let me just pop this open. And just see code like just pouring it, buffers so quickly. So we're running a bunch of things just on device, we're bundling on device. Um, we are not doing all the AI inference on device because the Apple model has a 4K max content limit and it refused to write code. All right. Pumping through code down here. Let me do an immig a migration. Okay. Let's see. Okay, perfect. So I was hoping that we could get some sort of error. I didn't want it to go perfectly. 
So here we've got a little bit of an error message. We pop in here, it looks like there's a conflicting route. So that's just a thing in Expo Router where if you have two routes that match the same name, uh, you're going to run into an issue like that. It looks like it already fixed it. I kind of want it to just stop right there, to be honest. <laughs> um, and we can just see we've got a Pokedex. So that's pretty sweet. And how long did that take to build as well? 40 seconds? Not bad, not bad. Uh, it generated, I don't know what we have here, so let's explore together. Uh, when we scroll to the top, we have these beautiful header bars with progressive blurs uh, just built in. You get that natural scroll transition. Oh, we even have a search bar right there. That's pretty sick. Let's see, can we search Pikachu? We got Pika right there. Does it have, has some context menus, the peek and pop, just beautiful animations that feel amazing on the device. Do they actually do anything though? Oh, it does, cool. We can send this picture of Pikachu to my boss. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. I mean, I think it will open all of our messages. <laughs> um, let's see, something in here that looks so good is that because these are all liquid glass elements like this, we can see a reflection, like a yellow reflection. <laughs> Charlie just texted me, do it. Um, <laughs> uh, we can see a reflection of the item down there on the, on the, 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 the glass item. Let's just, let's add this, edit this a bit more. Uh, add some more pictures to the details page. I don't, I don't know what happened there, but. You aren't missing much by not having this feature in Europe, by the way. It's, the QuickTime thing is a little bit better. All right. Let's take a peek in here. And we have more pictures. So, pretty awesome. <laughs> and the best part, if we wanted to, uh, say, ship this to the App Store or the web, we could hit this button right here and it will kick off EAS through Expo Launch right there in the browser. So from the palm of your hand, you can then kick this off over to the App Store and in less than 10 minutes, you can download it from Test Flight on your device. It is a lightning talk though. So I mean, I could build native apps all day and I can do it in front of an audience just fine. But uh, let's, uh, let's go back over to the presentation here. Now, I built this prototype to demonstrate just how quickly you can, uh, with Expo, ex I built this prototype just to demonstrate uh, how quickly Expo can help you go from zero to a compelling MVP in the hottest category right now. There's no compromises. You could ship something like this to the store. It's all thanks to React, Expo Router, EAS, and one more thing. I'm excited to announce that we're working with Mark Lowler to add CSS support to Expo for native apps. At its lowest level, this means you can write scoped CSS code and use it across platforms as is. Of course, people don't really write CSS at its lowest level anymore, and that leads to a lot of issues, uh, which brings us to the best part. Expo CSS will work out of the box with stock Tailwind. <laughs> Let me show you some snippets of this. Using native monospaced fonts, for example, is surprisingly difficult in React Native. And with Tailwind, it's a one-liner, incredibly easy. High performance animations and transitions, I'm talking using reanimated, making sure you have the right pressables, gestures, all of this uh, will work without hooks, events, or custom compound components, making it incredibly lightweight, especially on the web where CSS is just built into the browser. If you write code like this, instead of like this, you are able to strip a lot more unused code out of the web bundle. This also enables pseudo classes, media queries, and CSS variables in Expo on all platforms. And finally, We've been working on adding many CSS properties to React Native as well, to the native part of React Native. In the past, you needed to install an entirely new library to create gradients, but now it's built in spec compliant and it works identically to the web. <laughs> so
So overall, fewer hooks, fewer imports, fewer tokens, more backwards compatible, less domain specific knowledge, and it runs with zero overhead on the web. The official version of this will be coming soon, but you can try it today in Expo with the React Native CSS package. And thanks again to our partner, Mark Lowler, for his incredible work in this collaboration. There has never been a better time than today to build something really special with Expo. If you're interested in working on the bleeding edge of app development with us, reach out on X or catch one of us after the show or at the booth. I'm Evan Bacon. That's all I've got for you guys today. Thanks. Yeah.